This is the NCL adder study. We have five adders configured in four different ways as 32-bit adders. Uh, they're all simulated in Verilog and we collect statistics over all the simulations uh, to compare the adders. The details. We're going to look at five adders. The first adder, full add A, is the textbook adder that's in LDD. Full add B is a, an adder that enables the null wavefront uh, carry play ahead. And we saw this with the counter with the long chains of zero zeros. And this is the full adder version of that. Full add C is the canonical adder, which is mapped directly from the equations. Uh, and we just put it in here for illustration. Full add D is a half add, half add, or version of a full adder. Um, this makes a fairly significant combinational circuit, and we we'll use it to illustrate how we turn combinational circuits into oscillation networks. Full add Q is the quaternary adder, full adder, and uh, that's in LDD also. It's derived in LDD. So we're going to compose these adders in four different ways. We're going to do them with full word completeness, and this is what you're used to with the clock, where we wait for each ad to complete before we start the next ad. We're going to do it with 2D pipelined, where the carry is pipelined down the ad, and um, uh, we're not waiting for the completeness of each ad, but the completeness of each digit, um, and the digits uh, free flow. Uh, digit pipeline is an optimized version of 2D pipeline, and then fully integrated is where the enable rank of the link is integrated with the combinational logic. We've seen this in BiTriQuat, and we're going to um, demonstrate it here with the adders. At the end, we have uh, a composition example where we take two of our counters from previously and connect them to the adder, and we add the counts. So this is full word completeness. We take the completeness of all the digits and add them all together before closing with all of the input digits. And also, whatever's receiving the output digits closes with all of the output digits with a single signal also. So the usual concern with digital addition is the worst case carry propagation. But with asynchronous addition, uh, the carries can play ahead. And and with waiting for completion rather than timing the carries, we can take advantage of that. So completion can happen much earlier than the worst case carry propagation. And this chart indicates the average carry propagation for different lengths words. This is 64, 32, and 16. So with 32, our average carry chain propagation is 5. So what that means is that on average, we only have to wait for 5 carry propagations to get the completeness of the addition. Um, and you'll notice green here is for quaternary addition, and it's much shorter. It's between 1 and 2. And this is one of the reasons that we, um, we were interested in quaternary addition. These are the simulations of the full word completeness adders, and we're looking at the digit completeness for each digit, um, 0 through 31. So the thing about the full word completeness adders is that you can drop a time instant between each addition. Okay, and this sort of like the clock. And you can also see that they, the, the completeness for the additions varies rather dramatically. And you can see in the signals the weight for the short carry chains. Right, this is the carry chain. Okay, so that's uh, adder A, uh, and this is full adder B. Uh, the carry chain weights are a little bit different. Uh, but it's the, the same situation. We can still drop an instant between each addition. So this is the quaternary adder. You can see that it only has 16 digits rather than 32 digits. And the completion of the adds is a little more, reg little more regular than it is with the binary additions. Uh, and you can still see the carry chain weights for the short carry chain propagations. It turns out that the quaternary adder is the fastest and the lowest power of the three, but it has a lot more gates, so it doesn't turn out to be best in class. This is the 2D pipeline version of the full adder, and it's 2D pipeline because digits pipeline horizontally from A to B to the sum through each full adder, and the carry pipelines vertically from full adder to full adder from bit zero to the high order bit. And this is the, the link rank for the carry from 
um, half adder 0 to half adder 1, and then 1 to 2, and so forth. And the next composition structure for the adder will relax the carry flow path by removing these gates and directly connecting the flow path and the, the closure path. And that's what we see here, and this is an optimized version. Uh, there are fewer gates and fewer transitions. In the final version, we implement, we merge the completeness rank with the combinational logic. So where before we had an enable rank here of a link, now this becomes the enable rank of the link, and it's also the combinational logic. This is still the completeness for, for the sum. This is the completeness for the carry, but now this is the enable rank for the carry, but it's also the combinational logic for the carry. This is what two-dimensional addition looks like. The digits flow individually, and after some jockeying with the initial carry chains, they settle into a pattern uh, determined by the carry chain propagation, which exactly shadows the carry chain propagation. So after this point, um, worst case carry chain or best case carry chain will have no influence on the performance of the adder. Now you notice that once they're in this pattern, they're slanted in relation to time. Um, so we can't drop a time interval between successive additions anymore. And we'll spread this out a little bit so we can see it a little better. So now successive additions are separated by a null wave front. Right? This is the next addition and the null wave front. And you can't apply a time interval to the additions because they're all different. And you can't drop a time instant between the additions. So this is purely logical flow. So now we define the full add component with the uh, truth tables for the full add. This is the table for the sum and the table for the carry out. These are the equations mapped directly off the table. And we define the component around these equations, right? So we'll call it full add, A, B, and carry in, flow to sum and carry out. And we have a flow statement here uh, specifying that A, B, and carry in are AND related and sum and carry out are AND related. And here we have the equations for the sum and the carry out. And here we have the closure equations, which are also AND related. Uh, and down here we have the version of the component, which uses the default, right? If these are all AND related, then we don't have to specify the flow relations and the close, and the close statements. Um, because they can be implied. The fact that they're absence means that they are AND related. So we'll build our 32 adder with a component uh, called adder. We'll define a 32 element token of two OR elements. So this makes a 32 bit dual rail number. And this is sum and A and B. And down here we'll define a path for sum based on its first uh, structural component. Uh, which ranges from 0 to 31. So I here is going to range from 0, zero to 31. So we're going to connect 32 full adders through their carries. And we're going to provide a carry in uh, for the top and take a carry out uh, out of the bottom. The full add component is bounded by half oscillations with internal links. And when we compose full adds, we get closed oscillations. We get a pipeline of carries from full add to full add. And what that gives us is 2D pipelining. So the canonical form of construction is 2D pipelining. Now, we get full word completeness with, as a relaxation of the 2D pipelining structure. Uh, our digit pipelining and the integrated pipelining are optimizations and enhancements of the 2D structure. But the, the natural composition is 2D pipelining. So we'll quickly go over the full adders. This is full adder C. It's the canonical mapping from the equations directly. And you can see those two big min terms. Um, and we can optimize by combining the min terms. We have some specification equations uh, that go along with the optimizations and the transformations that we do on these adders. Um, we're not going to dwell on those, but uh, we're just going to quickly go through the adders here. Uh, so this is full add C integrated, uh, and these are now uh, enable ranks uh, with the combinational logic. And now this has two internal oscillations and the boundary half oscillations in the specification here. 
Uh, this is the textbook adder, and it's difficult to derive, but it's easy to prove. We just take the equations from the gates, combine them, and we get the, uh, the original uh, defining equations. Uh, this is the integration. Uh, this is a 4-input gate. If we add the, the closure, it becomes a 5-input gate. Uh, not good for CMOS. If we want a few, you know, less input gates, we can back the equation out of the four input gate, but now we have more gates and, and more transitions. So integration doesn't always work. Uh, so here's some more derivations we're not going to dwell on. So this is full adder B, and this is a, represents the, the carry play ahead for the null. If you remember in the counter, it was a situation where the carry could come in and prevent the play ahead. So we isolated the carry um, one gate back from the, from the output, from the carry output, to keep the carry from preventing the, the early play ahead of the, of the null carry, the null weight front. Uh, and that's what this represents. Um, and here's the integrated versions of it. So this brings us to full add D, uh, the half add, half add, or version of full add. And what this does is gives us a significant combinational circuit to play with. So this is the first um, component, which um, has the half oscillations and the internal links uh, and the large combinational circuit. So this is the specification for that component. So now we will we will turn the midterm ranks into enable ranks and what this gives us is uh, one internal oscillation, two internal oscillations, and uh, the boundary half oscillations. And now we have a structure of oscillations and this oscillation goes to two places. The output of this oscillation goes to two places. It goes directly into this oscillation and it bypasses and goes into this, but this one goes into that too. So you notice that this output of the oscillation goes here, but it has to wait on this. Also, the out when this closes, it gets here, and the closure has to wait on the closure of this, right, because the output is going through here and it has to wait on the closure here. So we have a situation where this is the longest oscillation, right, so we have to count the gates through here all the way through here and around here, and that turns out to be 610 picoseconds. And the, the min term, these other internal oscillations, are much shorter. So the 610 picoseconds becomes the pacing oscillation for the circuit. Um, but we can mitigate that by breaking this into two oscillations. And we do that by adding a buffer component um, and now we have an oscillation here, and we have an oscillation here. So we've broken the long oscillation into two oscillations. So now we have a carry A and a carry A1, a 380 and 5, 320, but min term B is still 500. It was 500 up here. It's still 500. So now, now it is the pacing oscillation period, right? So we've gone from 610 picoseconds to 500 picoseconds by adding adding the buffer in the, the appropriate strategic place. Uh, and this is the specifications with the internal components, right? This is an internal component. This is an internal component. And this is the, the buffer internal component that we added. Okay, so now we're going to turn every rank into an enable rank, and we're going to take the OR ranks also, and that's what these are. Um, so now we have one, two, three, four, five internal oscillations. And again, we have this long propagation past these two oscillations, right? This has to wait on these before it can close with that. So we have the same situation we had before. Um, and so now the, if we count the delays around the oscillations, we see that carry B is 320, but carry A is 480. So that's the pacing oscillation. Uh, so we do the same thing we did before. We add a buffer component and break it into two. Uh, so now they're shorter than sum A. So now sum A is the, is the pacing oscillation. 
So from just rules of pipelining, th rules of thumb for pipelining, you might think that if we put a buffer to associate with this um, oscillation, then we would even speed up more. Right? So we have a buffer associated with this, a buffer associated with that. It's called balancing the pipelines. But we do that, and we see that we do make these a little bit shorter, but sum A still remains 300, right? So this is still the pacing oscillation, right? So adding this component, this buffer component, didn't do anything at all. And you'll see in the simulations that the, the, the time for this simulation and the time for the previous one is identical. Right, so adding these gates and these transitions had no effect whatever on the performance of the circuit. Uh, and here's the final specification. These are the two buffer components added. So we come to the quaternary adder. Uh, this is directly out of LDD and it's derived in LDD. Uh, now A, B, and sum are four rails instead of two rails and there's only 16 digits instead of 32 digits. And this is the basic component with uh, internal links in the boundary half oscillations, and this is the specification for the component. And we have the series of integrations, uh, uh, gradual, here's one, one integration, you want a little bit more integration, and then the final with, well, every rank is integrated. Um, and we'll talk about the timing of this later. It turns out that um, it's the it's the lowest power, lowest number of transitions, and the fastest. But it's got an enormous number of gates, and so it's not best in class. And if anybody can ever figure out how to make this combinational circuit more efficient, more effective, along the lines of the binary adder, which is only four gates. Um, then quaternary, addition, quaternary uh, arithmetic can, can become very significant and important. Um, but, you know, the size of the full adder is, uh, is, a, is an impediment at the moment. So each of the adders in the various configurations is simulated in Verilog. These are the names of the Verilog files, and we collected statistics over the simulations. Uh, the, for the total gates, we just counted the gates in the design. Total transitions, we just counted the transitions uh, from the design. And the average time, we took from the Verilog simulations. Some things to notice down here is that the full word completeness adders are, they have very few gates and very few transitions, but they're extremely slow. You'll notice that C and D are not included here because they're way off the chart. Um, and Q is in Q. Q has the, the lowest number of transitions, uh, but it's got more, um, more gates. So this is the digit, uh, digit pipeline additions, and you know it's, it's pretty efficient. Uh, and the 2D pipelining, and you'll notice that the quaternary adder Q is always the fewest transitions. And that is one of the things that attracted us to the quaternary addition, right? It's, it's the fewest, tra even though it's the, <laughs> a lot of gates, it's, the, it's, it's always the fewest transitions because it only has 16 digits uh, and there's fewer transitions per digit. So if we can ever figure out how to make an efficient uh, quaternary full adder, uh, there will be, be a very large payoff. Um, uh, so here you notice D, uh, when 4 and 5 became the fastest, right? That, so that became the, the our fine-grained pipelined D adder became the fastest adder, but it has a lot of gates and a lot of transitions, so it's not best in class even. Um, over here, I tried to uh, come up with a figure of merit, and what I did was I just added the total transitions and the total gates and divided it into the average time. So it's kind of a cost per gigahertz. Um, and the thing to notice over here is that A is always best in class, right? A is the best full add 
uh, full com full word completeness adder. Uh, it's also the best digit uh, pipeline adder. It's also the best 2D pipeline adder. It's also the best integrated adder, um, which is a bit of a surprise. I thought maybe B would would edge it out occasionally, and I thought maybe the quaternary adder uh, might show uh, be best in, in some sense somewhere, but it's not. Okay, so that's kind of the takeaway from from the study that the uh, textbook adder that we've always used is generally the best adder in any situation. So we just use that. So there's one more thing to talk about, and that is that we connected the two 32-bit counters to the adder. So now that we have the adder, the adder being driven by the 32-bit counters, and it's adding the adding the two counts as they flow. So this is the adder with the connected counters. The counters are generating 2D pipeline flow, and the adder is receiving the 2D pipeline flow and adding the 2D pipeline flow. And this is the the sums out of the adder, the completeness signals of the sums out of the adder. Um, so if we look up here, we'll look at display sum. Now if the adder is adding two counters that are counting by one, the adder itself should be counting by two. So if we look at uh, this is just the lower bits of display sum, if we look at bit zero down here, we see that it's a constant zero. And bit one starts toggling uh, by ones, bit two starts toggling by twos, then by fours, and so forth. So if we shrink this down, we can see that the counter, the adder is indeed counting by twos by inspecting just the pattern of delay sum.